We'll bring Kevin Pelton from ESPN.com into the conversation, Kevin. I said yesterday on the show, I'm not taking anything from game one or game two and making any opinion from game three. So if you add game three into the equation, can we figure out anything for game four? (laughs) Well, you know, the the last two games were so opposite each other that uh, at this point maybe we can't, I I don't think. Uh, You know, the Cleveland playing much better at home was to be expected. They were so bad offensively in the first two games of the series, much worse than I think even when you give the Warriors credit for how good they are defensively, you could have expected from them. And that sort of bounced back. But I, what surprised me is how well they executed defensively and really frustrated this Golden State offense throughout much of the game. Uh, Steph Curry, Draymond Green, Clay Thompson, those guys only combined for 35 points in that game. It's the fewest that the three had. They didn't score a point in the first quarter. Um, Just an off night for the three guys, or were there some adjustments there by Cleveland that you liked? I, I don't know how much of it was adjustments. You know, the the one thing, obviously, was the absence of Kevin Love, which allowed them to put LeBron James on Draymond Green and, you know, be able to switch pick and rolls involving him, and, and that gave them a lot more flexibility. They trapped a little bit more against Steph Curry than they had, but, you know, they've been trying to do something similar. It was really just more, I think, about Cleveland's energy level, their focus, all of that was much better at home, fed off the home crowd, got a lot of deflections we saw over the course of the game, and uh, forced Golden State deep into the shot clock. At the same time, you know, we know that Klay Thompson and Steph Curry are good enough that they can make difficult shots. That's what they've been doing all season. That's how they beat the Thunder. So, you know, if if they get going, it may not matter at some point what Cleveland does defensively. All right, uh, Kevin Pelton's with us, ESPN.com, covers the NBA. Uh, LeBron James, seventh game with at least 30 points, 10 rebounds, five assists. Uh, He had one of those games that you kind of been asking for from him, you know, that game that you say LeBron needs to do this to win. Does he need to continue to do that every game for them to win? Is that the only way you think Cleveland can win? I don't think it's the only way. I mean, we also saw them shoot 12-25 from three-point range, which is a lot closer to what they'd been doing in the first three rounds of the playoffs than the first two games of this series. And, you know, that makes their offense go a lot more. I I thought the biggest thing with LeBron, you know, obviously he he, uh, just – had better opportunities, uh, you know, was more dominant down low, things like that. But it was really his confidence in his outside shot and seeing that go through in the second half. That's a that makes a huge difference in his game. The way that the Warriors, like pretty much everyone else, have been backing off of him and kind of daring him to shoot. So whether he can continue that, I think, is the big question for him. Uh, Kevin Pelton with us. Kyrie Irving had 30. Um, and offensively, that's not normally the question. But I thought he played a much better game defensively. Um, and I think that's a big reason why they lost the first two games so handily. He was horrible defensively, uh, but played much better in the game defensively. How much of a key is Kyrie in this series? Because it seems like it's always LeBron, 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 uh, but second fiddle needs to step up too. Yeah, you need to get scoring from other places, and the way Golden State is defending them, Kyrie's going to have some opportunities. You know, they've been able to run the pick and roll against the Warriors centers who, when they don't have Draymond Green in that spot, those aren't guys that really like to play up on the perimeter against the pick and roll, so that gives Kyrie Irving the opportunity to get pull-ups. He was missing those shots in the first two games, and they were going in last night, which, again, you would expect to happen eventually. And then defensively, you know, I think it was kind of similar to his effort in Game 1 of last year's finals, where the Cavaliers pulled the upset uh, before he got injured in overtime and you know he's capable of doing that sort of thing it's just really again locking in defensively and giving that kind of effort devoting that kind of effort to that end uh all right Kevin obviously everybody's talking about love he did not play they win the game so now what do they do with him uh for game four what does your strategy if you're Cleveland with Kevin Love Yeah, I think I would bring him off the bench. You know, it's understandable coming back from a concussion. He's been out this week, so his conditioning is not where, you know, you would want it to be, I think, at this point in the postseason. So all of that, I think, gives a lot of uh, of reason to start with him in that role. Although I I think you have to expect, if you're Ty Lue, that the starting lineup is not going to play as well and be as dominant as it was last game. And that's where maybe you need to adjust and and move Love into a larger role, you know, if you're not having the same kind of success with that, that. that smaller group yeah and uh you know love uh, obviously another guy who struggles on the defensive end of the floor for them uh was that an area that not having love last night that helped cleveland out 
Well, like I mentioned, you know, LeBron James was able to slide down on Draymond Green. Previously, they'd had Thompson on him, and then uh, love defending Andrew Bogut because of the fact that they were kind of trying to keep him out of the pick and roll as much as possible. But, you know, if, if the other four guys had played as hard with love as they did last night, I, I think the Cavaliers would have been just fine defensively. As uh, Steve Kerr said as well, Kevin Pelton's with us here, Kevin. Uh, so game four in Cleveland, and we know uh, that the Cavaliers have not lost there. Uh, we do know that Golden State had lost every game three. Uh, we've seen blowouts, uh, but you know, Curry has vowed to be more aggressive and much better. Uh, which way are you lean in for game four? I, I think probably a close game after we've seen all these blowouts either way in the first three games of this series. Uh, I, I think that's my expectation. And, you know, historically when the Warriors have played close games and they've been able to re- ride that death lineup, put Draymond Green at center, that's been a recipe for them to be successful. I mean, the interesting thing is, you know, even though they've lost, uh, I think, five game, or five games, so, six games so far in the playoffs, uh, they've lost at least once in every round. They've really only lost two close games. Uh, game three at Houston when Curry was out, and then uh, then game game one against Oklahoma City in the conference finals. That's the only time that they've really had the death lineup intact and, and not won with it. So I, I think if we see more of that, I, I think they do probably end up pulling out the win. All right. Uh, we know uh, the uh, game four on 97.3 ESPN. You can listen to all the action. Right here, uh, I saw John Calipari mention that he thinks uh, his guard, Jamal Murray, uh, is the guy at number one. He thinks he's the most polished and ready guy. What say you? No, I mean, that's it's a, it's hard to make that argument statistically. <laughs> I mean, Simmons is, is the guy to me, and, and if you're looking somewhere else, maybe Brandon, Brandon Ingram, if you, you think, you know, if you have questions about Simmons, uh, his his body language, his effort at the defensive end, all that sort of things. Then then Ingram is the the alternative. It's not not Jamal Murray, which is no knock against him. I, I kind of feel bad that this uh, this whatever kind of campaign it is to try to talk him up as the most talented player in the draft. He said something similar at his workout in Boston earlier this week. Like it's it's putting him in a bad spot because of the fact that it forces us to point out why he isn't that guy, which he's not. Yeah, and for your money, is he even the third guy? I mean, is he even the clear number three guy? No, to me, actually, I would have Dragon Bender number two on my personal board ahead of Ingram. I, I know that's you know a, a distinct minority in NBA circles. I would go those three guys, and then I would probably have Jamal Murray number four, I think. All right, uh, NBA draft coming up on uh, Thursday, the 23rd, Sports Bash 97.3 ESPN. Uh, and, of course, continuing coverage of the NBA Finals where – uh, we got LeBron and uh, LeBron James, by the way, last night with that game over 30 and uh, the 10 rebounds. I mean, just a, a monster game. And uh, you wonder what kind of game will Curry come back with? Uh, because quite frankly, Kevin, he has not played a great series by most people's standards. I think if you look at the numbers, you might say, uh, is he having a great series? But what say you on the Curry situation? Because he, ha- I mean, he hasn't had that standout game. No, certainly not. I mean, I thought he was really quite good in Game 2 when he was on the court, missed extended period in that one uh, with foul trouble. But, yeah, by by his standards, which are really high, Game 1 and Game 3 were about as badly as he's played this season. And, uh, you know, to do that two games in a three, two times in a three-game stretch and then not have a great game in the third game, yeah, it is, it is disappointing. I, I don't know that it necessarily tells us much about how he's going to play going forward. You know, Cleveland has done a nice job defending him off the ball, but with a guy like Curry, so much of it is about his his ability to make difficult shots, and he just hasn't done that yet so far in this series. Yeah, Splash Brothers averaging uh, 28 points per game. This series, they averaged 52 points per game during the regular season, and yet they're still winning, right? I mean, that's all that matters. They're still winning, but can they can they close this series out averaging 28 points a game between the duo? Probably not, just because of the fact that you know so much of their their victories and their success at home was all the attention on Curry and Thompson was creating breakdowns in the Cleveland defense, and that was you know allowing role players, allowing Harrison Barnes and uh, Sean Livingston, guys like that, open shots. And Cleveland was able to take that away in Game Three, and now all of a sudden they were both stopping those guys and containing everyone else. Uh, it's a 63-point swing from uh, Game One, uh, from uh, Game Two to Game Three. Game four on on 97.3 ESPN. Kevin Pelton over ESPN.com with more on the NBA, the NBA Finals, and the NBA Draft, which is coming up. Thank you, Kevin. All right. Thanks for having me back.